Today we're getting into the latest Tesla news, including the full self-driving beta rollout, updates coming to the Model S yoke, a possible new Model Y coming soon, Cybertruck updates, and Tesla officially moving their main headquarters. So let's get into it, and a special thanks to Teslab for sponsoring this video. First up today, Tesla held their shareholders meeting on Thursday and gave a few updates that are worth mentioning. Overall, the meeting was a normal meeting with voting and Elon Musk recapping Tesla's successful year and plans for the future. He didn't give any new product info other than reiterating how tough supply chain constraints are as a whole, pushing back any new products they might introduce. The Cybertruck is still planned for next year if all goes well with the Semi and Roadster coming in 2023 now. We've heard these dates before, but this was another confirmation that is disappointing but won't keep us hoping for things sooner. Elon mentioned how much they are having to pay to receive parts and fly them around the world, and how that is causing the price increases we've seen over the past year on all of their cars. The Model 3 just increased to a base price of $41,990, meaning that the base model Cybertruck has now become the cheapest Tesla you can order. The two views I've seen on this are one, Tesla will be able to make the Cybertruck for cheap and supply constraints won't be costing them extra by the time the Cybertruck releases, so that price will be possible. By the time it comes, the Model 3 will also be able to have a lower price back down to well below the Cybertruck. View number two is that the cheaper rear-wheel drive Cybertruck will never actually ship. Tesla never shipped the rear-wheel drive Model Y, and they canceled the standard range Model Y after a couple of weeks in the United States, so the same thing will probably happen with the Cybertruck. Either of these are possible, and I'm leaning towards that $40,000 Cybertruck not happening, but a lot can change in a short period of time with Tesla's 4680 cells ramping up and two new factories coming online, hopefully by the end of the year. Those factories will change a lot, and Elon announced that Giga Shanghai, their newest factory, has now exceeded the capacity of their original Fremont factory. On the call, Elon said, quote, We have three new factories. Giga Shanghai has done an incredible job. And Giga Shanghai now exceeds Fremont in production. Fremont still makes a ton of cars, but now Shanghai is producing more, specifically for the Chinese and European markets. Over there, it took them about 11 months to build the factory and reach production, and it has taken about a year to reach full production, and he expects fairly similar to happen in Texas and Berlin. When asked on the call about the Tesla Model 2, Elon kind of dodged the question by only focusing on the name Model 2 and saying that, yeah, Model 2 is not a car. There's no Model 2. The 3 means E. So we were going to call it the Model E, but then Ford threatened to sue us. So we said, well, let's call it the Model 3. So it's S, 3, X, and Y. Likely he won't say anything until it's ready to release because they don't want to kill off current Model 3 sales with more solid promises of a $25,000 car right around the corner. Still, this car is expected in 2023 along with the Semi and Roadster and will most likely be made at Giga Shanghai. When asked about the Tesla ATV or Cyberquad that Tesla unveiled along with the Cybertruck nearly two years ago, Elon talked about how dangerous ATVs are, saying, quote, we are definitely making Cybertruck here and so probably the ATV too. The ATV is an interesting design challenge because ATVs are pretty dangerous and we want to make an ATV that is the least dangerous ATV. It will have a very low set center of gravity because the battery pack is going to be down low. I think we can do some things with the suspension to make it really hard to roll this thing. When an ATV is rolling is when bad things happen. It's going to be the ATV that won't roll. Based on that description, it seems like Tesla hasn't done much work on that ATV since the initial prototype was actually an electric converted ATV, but Elon definitely wants it to be available when the Cybertruck finally releases. The last thing Elon spoke about in the presentation part of the meeting was the biggest announcement from Tesla. They are officially moving their headquarters to Austin, Texas. Texas from California. This is a big move for Tesla, who has had headquarters in Silicon Valley until now, and it will surely have an impact on the company. This falls right in line with what many, including myself, have felt about Fremont and Giga Texas. New Tesla factories are better, and Fremont is the factory that has to expand and improve vehicle production while also producing the majority of their cars. With Giga Texas, they should be able to exceed Fremont production in around a year, just like Giga Shanghai, and move all of their main operations there to focus on making the best cars with the newest factory. This this doesn't mean that Tesla is leaving California, however. Elon was clear that they only plan to expand their presence in California and expand their Fremont factory, but there's only so far that they can go in the Bay Area. They are building a new, very large battery factory in California as well, and we'll talk about that in a bit. Next up, some updates about the Model Y. First, when Tesla first announced the Model Y, they announced four different versions of it. Standard range, long range rear wheel drive, long range all wheel drive, and performance. Today, in most countries, you can only buy the top two models, choosing between long range all wheel 
drive or performance. Tesla briefly introduced the standard range model and now sells that over in China, but has not produced a single long range rear wheel drive model. Long range rear wheel drive is a very popular option for people who don't need all wheel drive and want the longest range possible, but Tesla discontinued that version of the Model 3 and never made it for the Model Y as I mentioned, even though they took pre-orders for it. Most people just converted their orders to all wheel drive to actually get the car, but some people have held on to their pre-orders of the non-existent rear wheel drive Model Y, and it's possible that Tesla may bring it back. A day one reservation holder posted their delivery update for their rear wheel drive Model Y, and it's suddenly updated to say estimated delivery two to six weeks. The total price of the car is $57,000 since it includes the cheapest rear wheel drive price, normal wheels, white paint, seven seat interior, and full self-driving package when the package was much cheaper. Many have taken this to mean Tesla is producing this car now, and that this could be made out of Giga Texas, which is making Model Y bodies from what we can tell. However, as this person mentioned, we will only believe it once we see it actually delivered. Tesla's delivery estimates are never reliable, and there has been no news about this car coming to be. It should be easy enough for Tesla to produce, since they make the standard range Model Y in China, and the long range all wheel drive, and this is kind of a combination of the two, but again, we'll see what happens. Hopefully that means that this variation is coming very soon though, and it would be a great cheaper option for Tesla to sell since their prices have continued to soar. The Model Y now starts right around $55,000, which prices out a lot of people, so a cheaper rear wheel drive model could help them sell even more. Once Giga Texas is operational and producing the Model Y in higher numbers, it's possible we'll see this car, and we'll have to see what happens with this customer's two to six week delivery estimate. A video of what appears to be a nearly complete painted Model Y at Giga Texas was posted by May Musk on Instagram, so this could be a good sign for production there. In any case, that's not the only new thing coming to the Model Y, as there have been some leaks of updated suspension possibly coming to both the Model Y and 3, and we'll get there in just a second. Before we go any further, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Teslab. Teslab is a free app for iPhone and Android devices developed and founded by Tesla owners with the goal of extending Tesla's vision of a sustainable future. There is a subscription option, but the free version of the app itself is well worth it and includes trip tracking, efficiency monitoring, and more. They are always updating their app with features like CO2 emissions tracking and emissions offsetting by planting trees. Most recently, they updated their app with a slew of new features, including an entire redesign of the app, live drive view, zaps, which are video reviews of supercharger locations, locations, groups, and a great Apple Watch app to control your car with. Tesla still doesn't have support for the Apple Watch, but Tesla brings you that support, allowing you to control the main functions of your car from your wrist. They also have social elements to the app like leaderboards for most efficient drivers, most supercharger visits, most gas money saved, and more. I personally love using this app to see how I could be getting the most out of my battery, since I tend not to drive in the most efficient manner on my own. Head to teslab.app slash ryanshawtech, linked in the description and comments below to check it out. As I was mentioning, there have been some leaked images of an updated suspension in the Model Y and 3. This is something that has been rumored for a long time now, as both of these cars ride quite a bit harsher than most would expect for their price. The Model S and X have an incredible adaptive air suspension that makes the ride amazing in those cars, and the Model Y from the beginning was designed with space for an air suspension. An air suspension would significantly increase ride quality in these cars and put them on par and better than other vehicles in their class. Tesla hacker at Green the Only has found references to an air suspension in Tesla coded manuals in the past, and now he has posted new images found in Tesla firmware. He said, quote, interesting images surfaced in firmware that seem to portray air suspension on Model 3 and Y for UI display purposes. What's weird is Model S slash X has exactly the same pictures, only the ghost car changes shape, so I am not yet sure what to make out of this. So on the Model S, the suspension screen shows this adaptive air suspension animation while driving, giving you a live view of how the suspension is working. Images of the UI for that with the Model Y or Model 3 have shown up in firmware, showing that Tesla is indeed working on it there. Per usual, we don't know exactly what to make of this since certain features Tesla is working on leak in code in other places and never actually make it to full production. However, this is definitely a premium feature that Tesla has previously designed into the Model Y and would be a massive improvement for ride quality. A further update about the Model Y came from Tesla's Giga Berlin party. Tesla gave a full tour of the factory featuring tons of Model Ys in process, painted and disassembled to show progress along with the machines building them. 
One of the most important things seen at that event was a cut open Model Y with structural battery pack and 4680 battery cells. This is what Tesla has talked about making since battery day and they should be producing this there eventually. This is a display model showing inside the design of the car but it really is the closest look we've seen into this new Model Y design yet. When this version with these new cells finally launches, it should bring great advancements and improvements to range, price, structure, and much more. Elon Musk responded to a photo of this to say physics for the win. One last update for the Model Y was seen at Giga Berlin as well with a headlight display. Paul Kelly tweeted a photo and said, quote, fully adaptive lights on the Berlin Model Y. This is huge. Elon Musk responded to this saying, quote, yeah, headlights are precision LED, so they can be bright without blinding oncoming traffic, pedestrians, or cyclists. It's unclear which features will come to which countries and which versions of the Model Y, but on the horizon are a ton of new features for this car. The 4680 cell structural pack is designed, and Tesla has a demonstration of what it looks like, air suspension could be coming soon, the rear-wheel drive model may ship soon, and new improved headlights are on the way, at least for Berlin first. Next up today, Tesla is pushing some updates to the Model S yoke and other Tesla features. The new yoke wheel gets rid of stocks entirely, so Tesla is doing some tweaks to improve on a few parts of the touch sensitive buttons on the wheel. In version 2021.36, Tesla says, quote, your turn signals will now automatically turn off when the vehicle detects a merge, fork, or lane change maneuver has been completed. If an upcoming navigation event is detected in the direction of the turn signal, or if the vehicle detects a subsequent lane change, the turn signal will not turn off until the maneuver is complete. Turn signals will always latch when pressed. Additionally, you can now press and hold to latch high beam and to activate the windshield washer. Note, turn signals will cancel based on steering angle regardless of the selected settings for automatic turn signals. I'm not so sure how intuitive it is to activate windshield washer with holding the high beams, and that really seems like an instance where they should have done a better solution, but other than that, the turn signal update should be helpful. Tesla also added cold weather improvements, improvements to the airbag system based on fleet data, auto park, and bioweapon defense mode being enabled from the app. It's always great to see new features come, especially for things that most don't know is possible, like airbag improvements, via free over-the-air software updates to all Teslas. Next up, a small update about a charging adapter Tesla will finally be offering. Tesla has their own proprietary connector, which is one of the smallest and best connectors available for an EV. However, no other company uses it. In areas where Tesla uses this connector, Tesla superchargers use these connectors, but if you need to charge your Tesla on the road away from a supercharger, your only option is a J1772 charger, which Tesla includes the adapter for, or possibly others, but Tesla doesn't sell those adapters anymore. These are fairly slow, and CCS is what offers true fast charging, and what Tesla ships on their cars in Europe, among other locations. Now Tesla is finally going to offer a CCS adapter for the countries where their cars ship with the Tesla connector. Just to be clear, both CCS and Tesla's connector can charge at the same speeds on Tesla cars. Apparently, Tesla will begin sales of this for $250 starting on Tuesday the 26th of October in Korea first, but it's expected to come to North America as well. Interestingly, quote, the CCS Combo 1 adapter can only be used with Model 3 and Model Y. I'm not sure what that reasoning is, but hopefully Tesla will also release one that works for the Model S and X. Next up, the latest for the full self-driving beta includes the actual release of the beta to those with a perfect score of 100. On Twitter, Elon Musk said, quote, FSD beta 10.2 rolls out Friday Friday midnight to around 1,000 owners with perfect 100 out of 100 safety scores. Rollout will hold for several days after that to see how it goes. If that looks good, beta will gradually begin rolling out to 99 scores and below. He followed that up to say that everyone with a perfect score will get it. There are around 1,000 owners with perfect scores, maybe 1,100 to 1,200 by Friday night. I tried my best to get a perfect score, but after holding on to a 99, I had an incorrect forward collision warning that brought me down to 92. This has happened to many demonstrating how much of a beta the safety score itself is, and Elon reiterated this on Twitter and on the shareholder meeting, saying that it's in early beta, needs to be refined, but should eventually be an extremely good predictor of crash probability. As most people probably expected, the beta 10.2 release and expansion did get delayed with Elon Musk tweeting, quote, a few last minute concerns about this build, release likely on Sunday or Monday, sorry for the delay. Hopefully this timeline does come true and the true expansion of this beta can get underway soon. 
Next up, two more updates from the Tesla shareholder meeting that are worth mentioning. Tesla insurance has been around in California for some time now, and Tesla has been wanting to expand to the rest of the US. Elon Musk announced on the call that Tesla insurance will officially be launching in Texas next week, and the US, quote, aspirationally next year. He also mentioned that in California, quote, we are going to be upgrading the version in California because we want to have the kind of real-time insurance where your insurance costs are based on your actual driving history, which is the right way to do it. Then regarding Tesla's new mega factory, which has begun construction in California, Elon Musk confirmed that it will be huge, producing 40 gigawatt hours annually for energy storage specifically. Quote, 40 gigawatt hours, yes. Actually, there's an example of where we are expanding. Also, we are expanding manufacturing in California. So this is in California, we just opened a big mega pack production facility. We won't see these high numbers for some time, but it shows how large Tesla's scaling plans are for battery supply and how they are continuing to expand in California, even as their headquarters move to Texas. Last up today, a rumor from Sawyer Merritt about the Cybertruck gives a more promising timeline than we've heard before. On Twitter, he said, I've been told that production slash customer Cybertrucks will be on the road in the first half of 2022, probably late first half. This is contingent on a smooth 4680 ramp and no major production issues popping up. On the share shareholder call, Elon Musk seemed confident about their current 4680 pilot line in Fremont supplying Giga Texas for the Model Y, and that could be good news for the Cybertruck as well. Tesla shipped the Model Y early, however, the Cybertruck is such a different and new product that seeing true deliveries happen that soon seems unlikely to most. I'm of course hoping for the best because I can't wait to see this crazy truck. That's all the latest Tesla news for today, so in the meantime, if you want to see how Tesla has managed to grow and get chips for their cars while no one else seems to be able to, you can check out that video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.